Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for the Auto What's New in AutoCAD 2021 webinar. Before we jump in, first of all, we want to say that we hope you are all well, taking precautions to stay safe during this hard time. We'd like you to know that you can count on us during these hard times to assist you in any technical issue, licensing questions, anything that you, we can do to help you in keeping your business going. We have all our technical specialists, trainers, business, business developers, customer service representatives at your command. So let us, all you have to do is let us know. Before we start, I want to change, I want to mention some logistics. So all the lines are going to be muted. And uh, I we would like you to write your questions on the chat box or questions box, and we will go over that at the end of the webinar. Uh, this webinar is going to be recorded for future viewing. And if, of course, if you have any questions all the time, you can not only put it in the chat box and question box, you can also email us or call us. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our senior AEC technical specialist and um, very experienced architect, James Cuervo. And without more delay, James, take it away. Thank you for your warm intro, Raquel. I am Jim Cuervo with Digital Drafting Systems. AutoCAD 2021 is packed full of value for subscribers. Here is an overview of what we'll cover. First, it's all about the right AutoCAD for you. When you subscribe to AutoCAD 2021, you can access the right tool sets for the job. Secondly, I am excited to talk to you about the AutoCAD's web app and mobile apps. They give us the freedom and flexibility to work on anything, anywhere, and at any time. Lastly, AutoCAD continues to deliver new features, including new automations and enhancements to existing functions. Let's start with your AutoCAD. AutoCAD, including specialized tool sets, enables you to work faster and more efficiently across disciplines. With seven tool sets, you have access to industry-specific features and libraries for architecture, mechanical design, mapping, and much more. Over the past 20 years, Autodesk has been investing in AutoCAD vertical specialization tool sets to help make AutoCAD as personalized and experienced as possible. When you subscribe to AutoCAD 2021, you gain access to all the capabilities of industry-specific tool sets and libraries, including the following. <clears throat> Mechanical, architecture, electrical, MEP, and much more. No matter the design challenge, you will always have the right tools at hand. Next, let's take a closer look at the AutoCAD web and mobile apps which provide quick and seamless access to your CAD drawings wherever you are and on any device. The AutoCAD apps make it possible to continue to design and draft with the most up-to-date files while in the field and on the go. AutoCAD subscriptions include access to the web app and mobile apps. These apps enable you to work on any DWG, use AutoCAD on any platform. Whether you choose to use AutoCAD for Windows, Mac, web, or mobile device, be it in an iPad, iPhone, Android, or Windows device, we have the right version of AutoCAD for you. You can enjoy a cohesive, expressive exp experience across various platforms. The state-of-the-art AutoCAD web and mobile apps let you design and draft anytime, anywhere. Wherever you go, you can have peace of mind that AutoCAD will be there for you. The AutoCAD web app kind of looks like this, or as a matter of fact, it looks like this. You'll notice that I actually went to web.autocad.com, at which point I then have access by signing in. This is all given to you with the subscription of AutoCAD. At the very top of the line here, we'll have the uh, path for our drawing with the drawing name. You will notice that this particular drawing is in the Dropbox. Right on the left side of your screen, you will see views, in which case you can switch between model view and these two, which in reality are your um, paper space layouts. 
next to it on the bottom, we have the properties dialog box. Then we have our layers, followed by any block that is in this drawing available, and XREFs, whether you have them assigned or you want to attach them, this is where you do it. This particular section is minimizable or expandable. Right below that, if you have the need to do uh, some drawing on your, on your uh, file or annotate or modify something on your file, you have your tools for draw, annotate, and modify. You will notice that it seems abbreviated. After all, this is a web app. Right on the right side of the tools, you have your command prompt. And towards the right, then you have your object snaps, object tracking, ortho, and polar. These can be switched, or the whole thing can be modified by hitting this button here and adding, let's say, coordinates in this case. Once again, please don't expect a full AutoCAD. This is a web app. On the top here, you'll find your uh, sign-in um, um, item, your help, your plot. And this is important. This plots to PDF. Then you have your settings, which are once again abbreviated. Following that, you have your save and save as. And then, but not last but not least, here you have your navigational tools, your undo, and your redo. That's a very small synopsis of our web app. With AutoCAD on desktop, web, and mobile, take the power of AutoCAD with you. Be productive on site or on the go with the essential tools that let you view, create, and edit CAD drawings on your smartphone tablet, and computer. There's no need to bring printed drawings to job sites or clients' visits any longer. To conclude, let's take a look at some of the new features and enhancements that have been added to AutoCAD 2021. They are available to all active subscribers of AutoCAD. Like with previous releases, graphics performances have been improved in AutoCAD 2021. We can pan and zoom faster in real time. When panning and zooming in 2D, AutoCAD automatically performs regeneration operations for a faster and smoother experience. 3D orbit, pan and zoom operations are also more responsive, especially for complex 3D models viewed with the multi-core processor. Though we cannot explicitly show you these improvements over a webinar, you can certainly feel them when using AutoCAD 2021 or when rendering in AutoCAD 2021. There's even more value for your AutoCAD subscription for AutoCAD 2021. Last year, Autodesk announced partnerships with Box, Dropbox, and OneDrive. This year, Google Drive support has been added as well. If it's a DWG, it will open in the AutoCAD web app. It can be accessed on the multiple platforms and devices with a web browser. The new drawing history feature can be a game changer for your workflow, <clears throat> giving you insights into the evolution of your drawings. Drawing history needs to have a clarification before we continue, and that is, the drawing itself must be on the cloud, and it must be on one of the following types of accounts, Dropbox, OneDrive, Box, or Google Drive. So the drawing needs to be there. Once you have it there and you have been working on it, you want to see the drawing history, you go to the Insert tab on the right side, I'm sorry, the View tab, my, my mistake, the view tab on the right side, you'll see drawing history. When you call the drawing history, it'll pull up this palette, which automatically will understand that this is in a cloud-based storage and then retrieve all of the histories of it. So in this particular palette that we have here for drawing history, what we have is today's um, uh, saves by the hours on Monday, 
on April 7th, on April 6th, etc., etc. At the very top here, <clears throat> what you will find is your filters. This very first filter is your filter per user. In this particular case, I am the only user for this drawing, therefore I am the only one listed there. If there were other users with access to this particular drawing and they accessed it, they would be available here and the same type of display would show. Further, if we want to look at this a little bit more closely by date, <clears throat> we can switch over to this button right here, which allows us to see which days of this month or the other months this particular drawing was accessed. Further, because we have so many, we have the ability to go ahead and narrow down our criteria through this slide bar right here. You will notice that it's giving you every 48 hours, 24, four hours, and single hours. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what this does for us. As I page down through the list, you will notice that there's a little button popping up right here. That is your drawing compare invocation button. Let's go ahead and compare this to something, let's say, uh, real early, um, April 6, 7.20 p.m. compare. And here's my compare item. We, got, we have a whole bunch of things to look at here. First of all, this is my drawing compare tool set, okay? This one here, is my settings for the drawing compare. Let's start with the tool set. In the tool set, you'll find this little icon here that is the little light bulb. That turns on or off drawing compare, but not necessarily the toolbar. So if I can turn that off, the toolbar is still on, but the compare is off, and I can turn it back on. Now, you'll notice that we have two different historical changes to this drawing, one here and one there. We know that there can be many, many, many changes in a, in a drawing. So how do we actually start to see all of them? I mean, we, we could be looking at a small portion of this and not see the whole thing. Well, that we have some of these buttons right here, which allow us to kind of toggle through the changes, which is quite interesting. Secondly, if I want to, let's say, import an object, into the current drawing. Now, this is very specific. I am going to transfer a part of the model April 6 version at 520 drawing into my current drawing. So for that, there's a button called import. And let's say I want to import this little item that is inside. Well, let's go over here instead. Let's go in this one here, and let's say we want to import that one, OK? What will happen is that this little line is going to turn gray, telling me that it belongs to this group. And I'll explain to you what the colors are in a second. And then the, the cloud itself will change. Let's go ahead and hit the Enter key to accept. Uh, uh, the reason we didn't change is because there's another something in there that we need to add. Okay, let's go ahead and say that one. Um, let's stop the drawing compare. I really do want you to see this. Let's go ahead and erase. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this one over there, just for the sake of argument. Okay, and let's go ahead and save it. Let's go ahead and draw and compare again to the 520 real quick so we can see. There's something really special I want you to see here, and why? that's why I'm insisting on this. Please give me a moment. Here it is, and there it is, and there it is. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to add these into this drawing. So this is the import, and then I import all of my objects that I want, and it's not letting me, well, we'll figure it out. Either way, what it will happen is it will turn this section in, okay, to gray like it is here, and the cloud will disappear. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the options that we've got. Here, it's telling me that if the items were in red in this drawing, they would be not included in the current drawing. So they would actually have to be part of the, the 520 history only. If it's green, which is the case here, then what it's telling me is that that particular object is existing only in the current drawing, but not in this specific date's history. Okay, 
it's a very specific comparison. It's not comparing it to the, his, the full history, just to the one that is selected. Continuing on, since we have the ability to go ahead and define our not in current drawings by using red, we can actually change that color if we want to. Further, I can change any of these colors as they appear to a different color that I choose. Now, let's say, for example, I only want to see the green objects. Well, all I really have to do is come to these little light bulb here and turn them off. Or let's say I want to see the reverse. Now, obviously, if we can turn on or off some of these items here, I can then, because I have a little button next to the cloud revision section of my um, settings box, I can turn off my cloud or also change its color. Further, I have two types of clouds. I have a polygonal cloud, which is what this is, or I can switch it to a rectangular cloud. Also, I have the ability to change the size. Now, I need you to understand that the size is not the arc. We're actually talking about the proximity of the cloud to the object, as it is shown here. You'll notice it's either further away or a little tighter in. Also, you will notice some filters here. This is actually allowing me to turn on and off my hatch. This is an exterior wall. It has a very specific hatch on it. I can turn it on and off. Also, if I so desire, I can then also turn on and off all my text. Now let's say, for example, that uh, we have this history and we want to actually keep it as a snapshot so we can then, without having to go to, through much, just uh, compare it, the, 420, the 520 on April 6th, to the 414 uh, 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 version at 217. What I do is I take a snapshot through this icon right here. And I do want you to see what happens. When I select this button, we get this dialog box. And what it does, it takes the name of the drawing and gives it a prefix and a suffix. <clears throat> I would suggest that the suffix version, instead of old version, you would put the version that you're comparing it to, April 6, 520. That way, it's always marked as what it is and what you're comparing it to. With that, we have looked at drawing history. XREF Compare is another benefit of subscribing to the latest version of AutoCAD. You can use the popular DWG Compare feature to external, for external references that are attached to your drawing. Now, we've seen drawing history. Let's now see XREF Compare. In XREF Compare, I want you to see immediately this bubble comes up. Well, that's natural. It's an XREF. Now, why is this happening? It's because if you can see, Drawing history, which is the previous one, is actually inserted into XREF Compare. I did some changes. I saved it. And as usual, it gives us the changes to XREF. Do you want to reload? What I do want you to notice is that we have this little um, radial button down here. Now, if this radial button doesn't have the check mark, what's going to happen next won't happen. OK? So let's go ahead and activate Drawing Reload and automatically takes me to the drawing compare. What you will notice here is that it's a very similar tool set to drawing history. OK, once again, like in drawing history, you can turn it on and off, right? And you can cycle through your changes. And you can then go ahead and change the colors, turn pieces on and off, as you did in the drawing history but you have an additional part here, which is the not compared. What that is really referring to from the way I see this is actually it's the ability to turn off the host drawing, which is what this is. This is an elevation drawing actually. So if I come over here, I can turn it on and off. That's the host. Or I can take it from a screen section to a white representation. Right? 
with that. Uh, this particular uh, dialog box is not necessary because it's actually drawing history, so we can turn it on, off and it continues. Now let's take a look and see why it is that this is floating. And you'll notice that there's a little pin item here. Now the reason why I have the pin item there is because when I unpin it and I move my cursor away from the settings dialog box, it disappears. And I'm, for, I for one like to see my options. I like to see them all the time. So what I do is come over here to my settings, turn it on, then I pin it and I move it to the side out of the way so I can then go ahead and do whatever it is that I need to do to the particular drawing so I can finish my comparison. Moving on. Revision clouds are much more user-friendly and way easier to edit. Now, our revision clouds are really now a completely different and object on its own. It used to be a polyline. So because it used to be a polyline and it's an object on its own, we can say, well, well where do we find it? You can still find it in the same place at home, drawing panel, draw pull down revision cloud. Now, if you open it up, you'll see it's the same options as before, but there is a huge difference. Let's go ahead and select rectangular here and define our rectangle to be here to there. The first thing you'll notice is that the arcs are actually a lot bigger than they used to be. So I don't have to scramble for the size. In reality, the arc length is set to a four foot arc, which can be edited. Okay, and I'll show you a way to do it later. Let's go ahead and define the cloud here. Right, so now let's see what this is. If we had selected it before and we saw our grips, previously we saw a bunch of grips everywhere for each one of the arcs, correct? We saw the ending, the middle, and the center. Now, even though the grips look like a polyline grip, it's not. Okay, the difference between polyline and line segments being that the middle uh, um, verti uh, vertices or grip in actuality is a little box. For polygons, it's a little dash. Now, what happens is if I hover my cursor, hover is the keyword, over the particular grip, I get options. I can either stretch it or add a vertices. So let's go ahead and see stretch. And what it does is allows me to stretch it any which way I want. Second, let's take a look at add vertices. The point, which is this midpoint, is now being turned into a vertices, and the two um, ending sides, or the two additional sides, or the additional side, is defined as a side, as you can tell. Now, if I want to remove that vertices, it's, once again, it's a matter of hovering, shifting, remove vertices, and you're back to where you were. Let's say, for example, as I told you, that you want to change the arcs. And I did tell you that they were editable. So if I select the arc, get my grips, right click properties, you will notice first thing that it is its own object. It is a revision cloud object. Further, it's going to tell you down at the bottom under miscellaneous that the object is a closed object, that the line type generation based on the arcs is disabled and that the arc length is four feet which I can change or switch it back. Okay, so with this, we have seen the new and much more improved revision cloud. Now let's take a look at Blocks Palette, which is a feature introduced in the last release, which has been improved now in a way that you are now able to access all of your blocks from anywhere at any time. Let's take a look and see how that works. In the block library, the way to access this is to go to insert under insert in the blocks panel under the down arrow for the inserts, you will find the blocks and from libraries. This particular palette is existing in the previous issue, but there is an improvement, which is the additional of this particular tab right here, the libraries tab. 
Here you will find your insertion options, which is typical from the previous version. But you have a couple of other things also. You have a filter and you have a history. Okay, you also have your, what I call the slide bar um, show, which is here, the slideshow right here, which allows you to see some of the drawings. Now, in this particular case, what I've done is I've actually compiled my sofa elevations and my sofa plans into two different drawings. This way, I then avoid having to see a bunch of blocks that I really have no way of understanding what they are. Notice that I actually went into the sofa elevations drawing right here. So when I actually move back, which is the only way to achieve this is to actually be in the drawing, it's back one. So if you go in, you have the ability to go back one. Great. So let's go into the uh, sofa plan here. And let's say that um, in looking at this, um, I want to filter this down a little bit. I don't, I don't want to see too many. I happen to know that the particular block that I'm looking for ends with the word bad in it. Great. So I go to the filters. And as we know, the asterisk button is a wild card, meaning it doesn't matter what it starts with. It has to end with the word bad in it, which is, there it is. That's my drawing bad. It's the only one here, which is fine. But I do want you to see something really interesting. If I come over here to my history and I switch folders, notice what happened. Nothing happened, right? But I can assure you that this particular folder, in fact, has drawings in it but they're not being shown. Guys, it's just here. Your filter's on. It, it's a quickie one. I, it, the reason I bring it up is because it happened to me and I said, oh man, I can't believe I did such an, such a, a, an easy mistake. Fine, let's continue. There's another thing that I want you to see, uh, which is this button here. Okay, if I open up this button, we have the ability to see uh, the representation of our blocks in different ways. I do want to call your attention to details. Even though this, in fact, is part of the old way of doing it in the uh, blocks without the uh, improvement, what I do want you to know is that don't you remember that sometimes we go into a drawing and, and we, we actually say, oh, I wish I knew if that was annotative or dynamic? Well, here it is. It's actually telling you whether the drawing, the particular block or drawing is annotative or dynamic. If I come open here into the fire stairs, you'll notice that the door is a dynamic block. And it's telling me so. I find it extremely useful. It's a quick time saver. Great, guys. Let's move forward. And let's go to breakout point. Breakout point is a new command that is accurate and reliable, unlike before. Not saying that it wasn't uh, reliable previously, but there are some changes that makes it much more user friendly. Let's come back to the breakpoint. And in here, we have this situation where we want to actually break these lines to conform our staircase. So in the previous issues, when we went to home, modify, break at point, I would be able to select the object and then without hesitation, select the specific point where I was gonna break it, this intersection. So the drawing would break at that intersection. Problem was that if I needed to continue to break objects and I wanted to recall the command and I hit the recall button, it would go to break with gap. Remember that, guys? So, well, at this time, it doesn't do that anymore because when I hit the enter key to recall, straight back to break at point. Very reliable. Okay, we talked about accuracy. How is it accurate? Well, let's say that this is the one that I want to now break at point but I'm gonna do something slightly different. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because I really want you to see what's happening. And I'm going to hover over the end and wait for my little label to come up, the end point. Now we know that when we define a hover point and the grip mode label comes up, it's telling us that it's tracking. So what I'm doing is I'm tracking that end point, but notice what I'm doing. I'm holding my cursor directly on top of the object. This assures that I'm having the tracking, tracking marker line on it, you know, that green dash line. And I just input, making sure that I'm on top of it, 24 inches. Now, I know that 24 inches is the exact distance between this line and this line. 
and there it is. Very, very, very accurate. Further, and this one is one I really like. See that arc? I'm actually going to break that arc along that length, specific size. Modify, break that point, this object. Tracking my endpoint, wait for the label. Tracking it, six inches. Take a look at that. I think that's pretty amazing. Continuing on, we have Quick Measure, which is a tool that now also measures area much faster than the standard area tool. The Quick Measure, as we all know, is achieved through the home, moving over to the utilities panel, pull down measure, you have Quick. Now the Quick Measure, we know gives us distances, correct? We also know that it gives us angles. Now it gives us area. By clicking in an enclosed area, such as this one, I define area. Now you will notice that my uh, dynamic mode is automatically turned on. I want you to see this because I, I found that really interesting. I come in here and I click it, and it automatically turns it on. You saw that? so you can get the area on your cursor. I'm gonna move the cursor now to point it down towards the command prompt because I want you to see that the command prompt is also holding your area values. But when I moved it, I, the area disappeared in here. Notice that, guys? So what happens if I want to take this and add it to that? I know that if I click here and I move my cursor, I lost it. So how, what, what's the trick here? It's pretty simple, rather. If I go ahead and select area here, and before I move my cursor, I press and hold my shift button, and then move my cursor until I see it inside the area that I want, and then left button mouse single click, it adds it. Then I can release my shift. If I moved it, I deselect it again, the whole thing. But what happens if I just want to deselect the chimney again? Well, before you move it, shift hold, move the cursor until you see it where you want it, Okay, it's a uh, it's, uh, dynamic mode is on, good. and it removes it. Unfortunately, I moved my cursor, but you saw it. That is a very fast, because in the old mode, you would have to go area, object, add, object, subtract, and it just got messier and messier and messier. This is a lot simpler. It's just click, 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 and you're done. After quick measure, <clears throat> we'll find my favorite, which is Trim and Extend. Trim and Extend has been become much more intuitive and easier to use. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. Trim and Extend now takes all of the drawing objects and defines them either as cutting edges or boundary edges. So you don't need to select edges in the new form. Let's take a look at it. We know that trim and extend happen to be what I call cousins, so they're in the same place. Let's take a look at extend first. In extend, I said before to you guys that it considers everything as a boundary edge. So if I move my cursor, look what's happening. The cursor, once it touches the end that leads towards the boundary edge, automatically extends it. You see that? Furthermore, we said that every object is defined as an edge, as it is here. So, but let's say what, I don't want to extend this to this line, I want to extend it to this one. Do I have to click, click, click several times? No. If you look at the options here on the boundary command prompt, I have boundary edges. So I can say boundary edges, what are your boundary edges? This one right here, are there any more? Just like in the old command, hit the enter key. And at that point, it reverts back to the new uh, trim and extend command, okay? which is actually pretty cool. Let's say, for example, that I'm doing the uh, trim and extend command, in this case, the extend, and I missed it. But look what I get. I get this line. Notice that I'm saying a line. I'm not using the word fence. The, the option fence is still here. The reason why I call this a line is because if it was a fence, I would be able to turn the corner, right? But in line, and why I call this a crossing line, 
I can only go to one point. You see what happened? So the question becomes then, what happens if I want to use my old crossing style? Can I still do that? Why, absolutely. I come over to the extents and I go to my options. Here in the command prompt, I see crossing. By selecting crossing, then I can go ahead and use my crossing box. Really cool. Now, you would think that this, because this is a closed object polyline type, that um, um, it would only work with those, uh, such as this, because this is a polyline. Well, I'm going to explode it just to prove a point here that it is, in fact, taking all objects as edges, boundary edges for the extent, and cutting edges for trim. Now that we are now talking about trim, let's see some of the things that are actually <clears throat> still a little bothersome to me about trim. Still works better than before, but there's still a couple of things I want you to be aware of. If I come over here to the extents, open up the down arrow and go to my trim, I want you to notice something. When I move my cursor, okay, I'm trimming, great. Okay, it's trimming and defining maybe the boundary of the hatch as a, a, bound, a, a cutting edge. Great, awesome, and it's doing it here and here. Let's take a look and see what happens to my hatch. It's not letting me have, uh, cut it, is it? Let's try it again. I'm doing this on purpose, guys. Let's go ahead and trim and come in here. Let's define this one as a trim. Look what happens. I have not been able to find out why, but I did find a workaround, which is this. If I go to trim, we know that we have our cutting edges. It's just a matter of defining the cutting. Oops, did that a little bit wrong here. Let's go ahead and trim. Let's go ahead and say cutting edges. And then I say, I'm gonna use these two as my cutting edges. And there are no more cutting edges, just like the old ways. And then just go ahead and select the, the hatch to, to trim. Oops, let's see what happened here. Oops. Let's go trim this one up. Trim. Let's go ahead and use uh, trim cutting edges. These are my cutting edges. There are no more cutting edges. Enter, and then I should be able to trim that. Okay, so by cutting edges and defining your edges, you can still trim your hatches just like you did before. Uh, although, there is that option. I'm going to undo a couple of times. I want to show you something something interesting also that I found, which is, let's say, for example, we, we, we know that we can use the, the boundary thing to, uh, to override the definition of all lines as boundary edges or cutting edges. But there is something that is new to trim and to AutoCAD, which is called the trim edges um, um, variable. It's a binary variable that uh, is zero uses as hatch for all boundaries, and one uses the hatch edges only as boundaries. And let's see that how it works. So let's go ahead and say trim edges. Uh, trim edges, sorry, trim edges. Okay, let's switch it to zero and see how that works. When I switch it to zero and I go back to the ex to the trim, you'll notice that I'm using now all of my hatches as trim. You see that? So trim mode zero, I can use my hatches as trim objects. Does that work the same for extent? Actually, it doesn't. Because even though the trim mode is set to uh, one, I believe, or yes, as set to uh, zero, Look what happens. It still defines all of the hatches as, uh, uh, as edges. So please be aware of that when you do that because when, when you need to go beyond your hatches, then you go to your boundary edges and then select the edge. Next, we have an announcement. The AutoCAD 2021 for Mac and AutoCAD Lite 2021 for Mac we are excited to let you know that it is available also. This release includes some of the features that are included in the 2021 AutoCAD Windows 
version, as well as some Mac specific features like a floating command line, which I find very, very nice. Let's move on here. Moving on, that has been the end of our presentation. I now open the floor to Raquel and Sandra for questions. This has been Jim with Digital Drafting Systems. Take it away, Sandra and Raquel. All right, Jimmy. Thank you so much for the great presentation as usual. It was very, very interesting. Um, Sandra, do you have any questions on your side? I have some of them on my side. I just have one question, and it is from Hassan, and it, uh, he's asking, can you write a text in a circular mode? Yes, that's uh, actually not part of this. It's not necessarily in a circular mode. You would have to go to your um, to your express tools. There are text tools there that will allow you to uh, create text in an um, so following an arc. Okay, so can you do that? Yes, you can, but you you, you have to go to the uh, to the um, uh, express tools. Thank you, Jimmy. That's all for me. Raquel, you have other ones? Okay. Yes, I do have a few of them. Okay, so the other one is why would you not be able to see values when you're using quick measure? The reason why you wouldn't be able to see values in quick measure. Let me just go back to the quick measure and show you real quick. Uh, quick measure. Oops, there it is. Okay, uh, the reason why would be because this would be off. So if you came over here to measure quick tools, you'll notice that if you turn that off, you're still in the quick measure, but you don't see it. So check for your dynamic mode. That's the reason. If you turn it on, it shows it. Next question, please. Okay, please. All right. Yeah, I have another one. Is does the um, does the XREF compare tool need cloud storage to work? No, it does not. You can actually uh, um, have it in your um, in your servers. Um, the reason why you would want to have it in the cloud is because if you want to uh, uh, access it through the web app. In that case, it's better to have it in the cloud because then you don't have your server next to you. You, can, you only have access to the cloud. So in that particular respect, when using the web app, yes, in the cloud. When you're just in, just in the office, you don't need to. Uh, good, okay, thank you. Um, there's a three more. Does the blog, and in the meantime, guys, if you have more questions, feel free to just write them on the chat box while I go through all the next three. Does the block library need cloud storage or can you save it to your computer? Yes, you can save the your block library to your computer or to your server or to your cloud. And you can access them from anywhere, especially if you're on the web app. Now, if you're going to use, strictly access these things through the web app because you're always on the field, then it's better to have them on the cloud. Because obviously through the web app, you really don't have access to your um, um, servers unless you know you have it set up that way. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, next one is can base AutoCAD view, edit, and create three D models. Well, it it all depends on what you consider base AutoCAD. If you're talking about AutoCAD right. LT, no. If you're talking about edit or AutoCAD standard, yes. AutoCAD LT, one of the major uh, um, um, constraints that I found that it has is, in fact, that, that that you can't do 3D. But that's what AutoCAD is uh, able to do. And that's one of the major differences. That's right. That's right. OK, thank you, Jimmy. The last question is that I have right now in my section is, should I get AutoCAD for Mac, or should I get Parallels and install AutoCAD for Windows? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> well, yeah, it is a good question. and. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you sincerely, I, I think it's a personal preference. Uh, I, I do know that on parallels, you, you do have some installation problems sometimes. Okay. Uh, ultimately, you're basically running a Windows type system. Uh, the, when AutoCAD works on Windows, it works smoother. When AutoCAD for Mac is on Mac, it works very smoothly also, although it's not quite the same software there, there are some differences 
So as far as I'm concerned, I, I wouldn't use Parallels. I would just go Windows. But if you insist on that, you know, on using Mac, yeah, Parallels by all means. So it depends on the preference. Uh, is there it's any the major differences between AutoCAD for Mac? Does it have like less, uh, less uh, uh, features? I, uh, to be honest with you, I've not played with it a lot. The layout is a bit different. It's more like the web layout. And there are some things okay. that you can do there that you can, in fact, do in the standard AutoCAD. Uh, what the list of that is, I don't know. But we do have an AutoCAD LT versus AutoCAD standard matrix that you can see what the true differences are. The differences are, yeah. OK. I don't have any more questions on my side. Uh, Sandra, do you have some? No, that's it. No more questions. I think you have a couple more slides. Oh, yes, I do. I forgot about that. Moving on. I'm sorry, Jimmy. Yeah, very quickly, uh, we wanted to mention to you guys that obviously the subscription have a lot of benefits that are good for you. The, when you subscribe to AutoCAD, you have flexibility and you have support benefits. One of the major differences between the old model and the subscription licensing model is that you have now technical support in on the phone. So you can get on your Autodesk account, you can request an appointment, and Autodesk will call you back on the phone, and they can actually do remote services and everything. Obviously, we do that for you as well. But sometimes if, you, if we have DC or if you do it on the weekend, then you also have that benefit on your side. Uh, with subscriptions, you get always up-to-date software, so you stay competitive. You have instant access to the latest features, like the latest features that James just showed to you in AutoCAD, um, because you have access to the latest version. So, But remember that you also have access to your previous versions. Uh, you also have flexible term length, so you have the annual subscription, the three-year subscription, the monthly subscription. Remember that this works that the more years, the more you save. So if you have a three-year subscription, you are saving 10% discount. Uh, you have a 10% discount. If you have an annual subscription, you will pay way less, way less, like almost, almost half, than if you go with a monthly subscription. And you also have administrative tools that let you easily uh, assign licenses to your users, own assign licenses from your users. Uh, look at the usage, you look at your billing um, date and your renewals, etc. cetera. Uh, finally, next slide. Uh, AutoCAD 2031, as you have seen in this great presentation from James, it has been built for the way you work. It has a lot of great features. It is built for the future. Uh, you can take advantage of the specialized tool sets that are included now at the same price that you used to get AutoCAD by itself before. And you have a graded mobility with the new web and mobile apps that is included. And I think that now we are all done. Thank you, James, for a great, great presentation. It was a pleasure uh, to watch it. Um, Thank you, everybody. I don't know if you have anything to do. OK. And uh, as always, uh, we are here for you. As I mentioned at the beginning, DDS, CAD, all our technical specialists, our representatives are here for any issues that you have, especially during these hard times, to keep your business going. So let us know. Keep us in, uh, keep in contact and stay safe. Thank you, Jimmy, again. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Have a good day and stay safe. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. It's been a pleasure. And wait for the next one. We're going to go Revit. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye, everybody.